Hello, my name is Frosty Panda, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use Kronos Builder. If you have not heard of Kronos Builder, it is a map making program that allows you to go beyond the usual high fantasy settings of other map making programs. You can make cyberpunk maps, sci fi, Victorian, a few others, and with their recent announcement of the Wishing Well Kickstarter, we're getting even more assets like Norse and modern zombie apocalypse. Kronos Builder is available on Steam, and you can find a link to their new Kickstarter in the description below. But without waiting any further, let's dive into how to use Kronos Builder in its current state. The first thing you'll see upon booting up Kronos Builder is this main menu with some pretty self-explanatory options. But for now, we're going to go ahead and start a new map. Here you are going to see a few options for your new map. Let's quickly go through them. This is the name of your map. Here you can add a description of what the map is. You can add tags to your map here to make it easier to find on the workshop. This is where your map preview is displayed. You can click the camera to take a photo of the current camera placement for the preview. This is your grid size. You can adjust your width and height with these buttons right here. And once you've decided on your grid size, click this box next to generate to apply the grid changes. Grid color allows you to enable light mode for your grid so you can choose between white or black grid color. And finally, we have your publish options. This is for when you want to publish your map to the workshop. Let's go over the interface you will be working with. To start, we have a drop down bar near the top of your screen. Here you have file with your basic options like load and save. Edit with some more common functions, undo and redo, for example. Camera allows you to switch between the different angles available within the builder. View allows you to hide or show other windows within the program. Tools allows you to switch between different tools within Kronos Builder. However, I never use this menu. And finally, we have help where you can review the quick start guide if you missed it or if you want to go over something. In the top right, you have this row of buttons. The first one is your options and language menu. The second is your global options menu, which will open the map info window if you want to make edits. The third option is export, which we will go over more later. Then we have save, load, exit, and this final button hides this menu. Lastly, we have the most important menu down here at the bottom. This is where you'll be doing most of your work. You have a search button here at the top. The prop tool is located here. Structures are located here. This is the terrain tool. This is the effects tool for adding weather effects or changing the time of day. We have a camera tool here. Doesn't do much except for make it to where there's no menu. And then we have the Kronos button and the auto builder tool. We will go through these one at a time and go over each tool's uses starting here with the props tool. The props menu is where all your props are stored. Here you can see we have cyberpunk, medieval, sci-fi, Victorian, and Eastern for prop selections. You can mix and match these props however you want. So if you're looking for a cool sci-fi or cyberpunk Eastern looking map, you can mix the props however you see fit. When you want to place a prop, select it in its window here. You will then see the object on your map with the spawn command window. While placing the object, you can use your mouse wheel or Q and E to rotate the object. You can hold control and use your mouse wheel to scale the object, and you can hold shift to enter gridless mode, where the prop will no longer snap to the grid. You just simply left click to place your item. The item you have selected will continue to be selected so you can place multiple of the same object until you come back down here to your props list and unhighlight the object. When you have no object selected in the lower window, you can interact with currently placed props. When you select a prop, the tweak menu will appear here on the left hand side. This is where you can get fine control over your object. You can adjust the position down to the decimal on the X, Y, and Z planes here. Rotate the object any direction with these buttons here or by typing a value in the box. And here you can rescale the item either with the plus or minus buttons or by typing in the exact value. You can delete the current item either by clicking the trash can here or clicking delete on your keyboard. You can click and hold to select multiple items and adjust the values as one move all the props at the same time, or delete all the props by hitting delete or the trash can icon. And finally, we have our group icon. This will make all the currently selected items one large item. 
Whenever you select any of the props in this group, it will instead select them all. You can click the button again to ungroup these items. Let me get some items placed here on the map and then we'll move on to structures. Structures work the same way as props do. They are just wall and floor pieces instead of actual props. Controls and grouping all work the same and they are in the same categories as the props as well. You can see here I have a room laid out with some props. I just need some walls and floors to bring it all together. So let's come down here to the eastern setting and grab some walls. Now unlike props, instead of placing one at a time, we can left click and drag to draw a room in full with the selected wall pieces. I'm going to choose this wall here and draw out the room by holding left click. There we go. It's coming together but we're still missing doors and windows. Thankfully Kronos makes it easy to add these once we have the room drawn. I'm going to select a door piece and click right here on the wall and you will notice it replaced the existing wall with the new door. We can also do the same for our windows. Now we just need to choose a floor tile and again click and drag inside this room. And there we go, we have a full room. Like I said, structures were just like props with some minor differences, but once you know how to use one, you can use the other without issue. Now that we have a full room, let's move on to terrain editing. The terrain tool is a great tool that Kronos has to offer to bring your map more life. If you want the terrain enabled, just click this checkbox right here to enable the physical terrain. You will also notice now you have more options to play with. This first paintbrush icon is to paint the terrain different colors. You can find different style palettes here in this drop box or paint everything with the paint all button. Here you can adjust the size, strength, and feather of your paintbrush. If you just want a little bit of the paint to come through, like adding a footpath, you can for example lower your brush size, drop the strength to something low, then increase the feather so it blends and isn't as harsh. Now when I paint, you'll notice it's not rough, but smooth, so I could draw more believable footpaths on the map. Next we have the terraform button. I won't go into super detail as a lot of these share the same brush options as the paint tool, but these sub buttons here allow you to raise the terrain, lower the terrain, level the terrain, and finally this one lets you smooth out the terrain. Next we have the liquid tool that allows you to paint liquids onto your map. Here you can select water, magma, or acid. And finally we have the nature paint tool which is a little misleading and I'll show you why. This tool allows you to paint trees, rocks, plants, and trash? Yeah, trash is nature now I guess. It is a great tool when you're painting dark and gritty cyberpunk scenes though, I just don't know why the trash is inside of a nature paint tool. But either way, you can select multiple things in this list and paint them all at once on your map. If you want to delete something, you could choose the delete brush here. That wraps it up for the terrain tool. The next one is a quick and simple tool, the effects tool. The effects tool only has a few settings, but they can make a large impact on the final product. Here you have sky, where you can make it daytime or set to space if you want a very dark map or plan on having your sci-fi map in space. Then we have weather effects. For now we only have two options which are rain and dust storm. Finally we have global lighting. Here you can choose the time of day which will adjust the sun's position and the shadows on the map. Here you can change the color tint of your map. Great if you're trying to add maybe a red Mars world or underwater style map. And finally, here you can adjust the brightness. It's very minimal, but it does have a noticeable difference. And last but not least, let's take a look at the Kronos button and the Auto Builder. The Kronos button allows you to morph your map into another style of environment. For example, I'm going to change my map into a medieval tavern as set by these drop boxes here. Once the choices I have are selected, I'm just going to click the Kronos button here. Please note that the Kronos button is still in its infancy and may have some problems with specific props. 
The developers have noted feedback and said they are looking to improve it. Now before we get into the auto builder, let's load a new blank map. The auto builder has two modes, simple and advanced, which can be toggled off and on with the advanced settings button here. Here in simple, you have a few selections to make. Setting, which is your normal sci-fi, cyberpunk, etc. Environment, this list will change depending on the setting you pick. And then finally, room. This is what style of room of that environment will be generated. I'm going to do cyberpunk bar bar main. Now I'm going to select a section of the map by holding left click and Kronos will auto generate that room. Keep in mind right now the auto builder could be better and doesn't do well on large rooms. However, the developers have already stated that they have been hard at work on the auto builder and an update is right around the corner. Next, let's take a look at Advanced. Advanced allows you to pick what kind of floors, walls, and pillars you want in the room generation. For props, you have the same options, setting, environment, and room. However, down here, you have a few more options, item density, door percentage, and window percentage. The auto builder works the same way. You just click and drag on the map to generate after making your choices. And that's it for all the tools. Finally, let's take a look at exporting your map. Kronos makes exporting your map extremely easy. Just click the export icon up here in the top right and you'll be greeted with all the export options. You have image, just as it says it will export it as an HD image file. You can change the camera style here. You can change the resolution here. And then you have virtual tabletop. If you are using any other virtual tabletop other than Foundry, make sure you have Universal selected. If you are using Foundry, be sure to select Foundry. This is how many pixels per tile you want. The higher, the better quality. Here you could choose if you want to export wall and light data. And finally, here is additional spacing that you can add around the border of your map. Print gives you the option for printing onto paper. You choose what type of paper you're planning here. The width and height is here. Tile size can be included here. What resolution you want the print to be. Here's where you could change the camera perspective. And again, additional spacing here. And finally is my favorite, video. Again, choose the camera angle here. The type of video file you want here. Do note that MP4 will be higher quality than WebM. Here you can choose a timer for how long you want the video to be. I found the increments of 5 seconds create the perfect loops for tabletop. Once you are done, you hit the export, or in this case the record button, at the bottom and your map has been exported. And that completes the tutorial for Kronos Builder. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or join the Kronos Builder Discord. Link is in the description. If you were intrigued by what you saw here, please visit their new Kickstarter, The Wishing Well, and think about supporting Kronos and its future. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.